I'd like to welcome Dr. Simon DeVries from Farming, a pharmaceutical company out of the Netherlands. Welcome. Thank you very much. Could you tell us a little bit about the tech, about your company and the products that it creates? Yes, Farming is the owner of a um, of a proprietary platform to create uh, protein uh, protein medicines out of transgenic animals, out of the milk of transgenic animals. So how that works is that um, you, when you create a transgenic animal uh, and you uh, insert the DNA in the animal's genome, uh, but you actually put the, associate that with a milk-specific promoter, that means that the DNA that is coded for that human protein only comes to expression in the mammary glands. In other words, it means that everywhere the animal has the DNA in it, but it's a normal animal, but in the mammary gland, it actually excretes that specific human protein in the milk. And then the milk obviously gets harvested, and out of that is just like, more or less, just like a um, cell-based uh, uh, production system. You just purify the protein out of the milk rather than out of the, out of the, out of the, out of the, bio, the bioreactor. So the rabbit is, in fact, the bioreactor. So you currently have your first product in the market in Europe. Could That's you correct. describe, could you tell us about that product? Yeah, that product is a, is a complement one inhibitor, C1 inhibitor. It is, uh, it, is in, it is approved in Europe for the acute, uh, in the acute attacks of hereditary angioedema, which is a rare genetic defect where people are missing uh, or have an inadequate levels of this uh, complement 1 inhibitor. So you, we're doing effectively a protein replacement therapy so that if people get an attack like that, then actually you do a slow IV injection of that and you then stop the attack. And what is the disease state attack? And the, the disease means that people have an abnormal response uh, uh, to stress and it causes extreme swelling of the extremities, of the face, of the neck region or of the, of the pelvis. And obviously if that happens in the neck region it can be, it can be lethal, it's a potentially lethal disease in this respect. And uh, how many people have that disease? It's a rare, it's one of these orphan diseases, about 1 in 30,000 suffer from that disease. So it means in the United States of America there's a total amount of around 10,000 patients of which between six and 7,000 have so far been identified and are under, under treatment. And is this drug the, that you've created via the animal model the uh, primary drug for treating that well, disease? Well, treating this disease by protein replacement therapy is the way to do this, but the alternative is, and those drugs are on available as well, is of course the drug that is filtered out of the blood of, uh, of blood donors. So plasma-derived C1 inhibitor is the alternative. It has been on the market in Europe for decades, in the United States, it was only introduced some three to four years ago, uh, the, uh, the plasma-derived uh, product. And because it's plasma-derived, it's both expensive and more difficult to come by? Well, it is expensive and more difficult to come by, you're absolutely right. We have, a, we have an unlimited, uh, virtually unlimited uh, production capacity in, in those rabbits, whereas, of course, blood donors are not uh, limited, in unlimited supply. And, of course, it has the sort of potential drawbacks uh, that plasma-derived product could have, you know, when certain infections could, find, could be found in, in such, uh, in such uh, products. And that obviously doesn't happen in, in recombinant products like ours. So when did it begin selling in, when did your product begin selling in Europe? We, we uh, got the European approval end of 2010 and we started to market access uh, in, in Europe in beginning of 2011 by our partner, Swedish Orphan Biovitrium. Um, so basically we're going through this very lengthy process of getting uh, you know, national and, and regional reimbursements in, and getting prices in Europe. And we've launched the product in Northwestern European countries, uh, including France, and we're going slowly down towards the Southern European countries. So you know, go, keep, keep going on that, and come the end of 2012, we expect that probably most of the countries will have given us some reimbursement. So then you'll start to see some revenues probably 2013, 2014? Yeah, there were already revenues, although, albeit due to this slow rollout, the revenues were rather limited in 2011, but we sold about 1.1 million euros of the product already in Europe, and of course that's picking up as we speak, and continue to, as you say, continues to pick up as we roll out further over Europe. Excellent. Well, what about uh, your progress in the United States? In the United States, we are currently uh, in, in a final phase 3B study that we needed to do for the FDA. Uh, we have, uh, we have um, uh, received a, a special protocol assessment for that protocol. Uh, that protocol is planned to be completed, the study, by the third quarter of this year. 
uh, that's a very important moment, but because when this protocol is going to be, the, the results are going to be positive of this, of this study, we will receive a $10 million milestone paid by our US partner, Santaris. Mm -hmm. And obviously, after that, we will file the BLA as expeditiously as possible. And upon the approval for um, acceptance for review by the FDA of the BLA, we will receive another $5 million milestone for our, by our partner, Santaris. Well, that sounds very exciting, and that's obviously uh, something to look forward to uh, on the revenue side. Um, well, this, the fact that you have a product approved in, the, in Europe and now in phase three in the U.S., your platform, your production platform, has been validated. Correct, yeah. And so what is next for the production platform in yeah. your development schedule? Well, yes, it, what's next is, is that the, the, the production platform is especially good for highly glycosylated and complex human proteins. And an example of that is the C1 inhibitor, of course, the product that we currently make. Mm -hmm. But the other, another typical example of that would be, for instance, of blood uh, proteins. And we're now currently looking at, uh, we're doing a feasibility study to create human factor eight uh, for the treatment of hemophilia in this, uh, this rabbit-based system. So we announced that about three months ago that we started this feasibility study together with a partner, Renova Live, which is a Chinese-American company that actually is engaged in the creation of the transgenic rabbits. Well, as you move through your phase three and you start to look at uh, Human Factor 8, how is your financial situation uh, uh, as far as funding that? Well, obviously, uh, as long as we're um, we're not on the U.S. market. Uh, we're not uh, yet uh, financially sustainable, so we need to continue to raise funds. We've recently done that. Uh, so we recently closed in um, in December uh, of last year. We closed an 8.4 8 million euros uh, short-term convertible bond, which uh, has provided us with the financial means to actually reach these 10 and 5 million milestone in the future. So currently, the company is financially secured until 2013. So, what message would you like? to leave the investors that you feel is most important that they should focus on as they discover your company and look at your company as a potential investment? Yeah, the interesting uh, aspect uh, for the United States market with regards to our product is that the recombinant product uh, has the ability and has, and has the label in Europe and will get the label in, in, in the US to be able to dose higher. That actually translates in very high response, un, unsurpassed response rates from published data. So where the, uh, where the plasma-derived products uh, have a good result, of course, because they're the same product, they are limited in their label with regards to how high they can be dosed, which is, according to published data, gives around 65 to 70% response rate, whereas we go 90, 95% response. So we will provide a real good alternative for the, the plasma-derived products in the U.S. market as well. So therefore, it's a good idea to keep an eye on, on progress as and when we come towards the U.S. market. Well, Dr. DeVries, I really appreciate your time and sharing your story with us. And good luck and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.